In today's video, I'm going to be addressing a comment that I got from one of my subscribers saying that they're really intimidated by measuring a patient for an EEG, which I completely understand. I was in the same exact boat, so I wanted to make this video to help you guys. So I got my mannequin heads here, one with hair, one without hair. If you're a brand new beginner, start with this one, the bald one, put some tape on it, and use a dry erase marker so you can draw on the head and also just take a little baby wipe and it comes off really easily. So when measuring the patient, I like to have a nice routine where I go from front to back, nasian to inian, and then I go from side to side, preauricular point to preauricular point, going through the center mark. Then I like to go do the headband or the circumference, which goes all the way in a circle around the head, which is kind of hard to hold the measuring tape and do that and make a nice complete circle that isn't like tilted sideways or anything like that. So it takes some practice and some dexterity to actually get it. So you have to practice it over and over again. Then once you have the circumference, I like to do the front horseshoe, which goes from F7 through FZ through F8. And then I like to do the back horseshoe, which goes from T6 through PZ over to T5. And then I like to do the left parasagittal, which goes through FP1 all the way back to O1, crossing through all the marks that you've already made on the left top of the head, essentially. And then I do the right parasagittal, which goes through FP2 all the way back to O2. So once you have your routine, a thing that people struggle with is getting the percentages. Most of the percentages in the 1020 system are either 10% or 20%. Now, doing math in your head is kind of complicated sometimes. So let's say, just to make this easier, let's say you go from the nasian, which is at the bridge of the nose, all the way back to the inian, which is the bump in the back of the head, and you get 34.1 centimeters. Now, 34.1, if you had to take 20% of 34.1, that starts to get really confusing. So what I like to do is just round to 34, and that way it makes the math a lot easier because 10% of 34 is just 3.4. And then 20% of 34 is you just take the 3.4 and double it, which is gonna be 6.8. Now, if you're having to do math on really complicated numbers like 34.1 centimeters and find 20% of that, uh, it could get really complicated. And then you could end up with the wrong math, which is way worse than just rounding to 34 and getting the correct math and all having all the points equally spaced because that's the big picture, guys. Even if it's just one or two millimeters off, it's okay as long as all the electrodes are in the right spaces and they're all equally distant. So that way it doesn't cause any major changes to the EEG that could trick the doctor into thinking there's some abnormalities. So pick numbers that are you are confident in doing the math on. Don't get too complicated with it. You can round down by like 0.1 or round up if it's, let's say, 34.9, you can just round up to 35. So that way, 10% of 35 is 3.5. And then just double that for 20%, and then you get seven. Easy, easy numbers to work with, and that'll help make it easier. Now, once you're confident in doing the bald mannequin head, you can pretty much retire it. You won't really need it as much anymore. Then you can go on to the mannequin head with hair, guys. Definitely a lot harder, but more realistic to what you're going to see in the actual hospital. So once you've mastered this, you can practice exclusively with the one with hair. Now, my friend used it and they braided the hair. I didn't braid the hair or anything. If you're a girl, maybe if you braid the hair, it'll make it easier for you to at least practice on. But I think it's good to practice it without any braids and just straight long hair because you're gonna see that a lot in the hospital. So once you're working on speed, 
you have to realize that I remember back in the day when I'd be measuring the patients, making the marks, I'd have patients tell me, all right, how much longer is this going to take? Are we almost done here? And then my heart starts racing because I'm not even finished measuring and I still have to put all the electrodes on too. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're going to be mad at me. Well, a way to avoid that is to be very upfront before you even start. Let them know, hey, if you're a beginner, tell them, hey, it's going to take about an hour to set up and it's going to take 30 minutes to record, an hour and 30 minutes total, and we'll get you out of here. But then once you're more experienced, you can say, hey, it'll take about 30 minutes to set up and 30 minutes to record, an hour in total, we'll get you out of here. So... If you're up front with someone, they're a lot less likely to start rushing you and being like, hey, hurry it up, hurry it up, because people do do that, guys. Now, another way to combat that is when I was in my last semester, I started trying to measure these mannequin heads. I already knew all the spots. I had been doing it for a couple months now, but I was still a little bit slow. So I took a thing from video games where people do what is called a speed run. They try to beat the video game as fast as humanly possible and they post their times online. Now I tried to do the 1020 measuring as fast as possible and I would time myself. Now in the beginning I, I still have this screenshot in my notes where my first time and keep in mind this is in my last semester so I had already gotten pretty good at it. I got it took me six minutes to completely measure the head. And then in my second, third, fourth, fifth, six times, it slowly got better and better until I cut my time into half, where it was only about three minutes. And then I found that that was about the limit to a, how fast it could actually humanly be. And I was pretty confident in myself. Now, it, it did seem a little bit like cheating because if you're measuring the same head over and over again, you're, get, you're getting the same numbers. So that's a reason why I got a, little, a lot faster. But even if you're doing that, you're just drilling the fundamentals over and over again. And that's how it is with literally everything. Basketball players, they shoot a lot of basketballs. That's how you get better. Golfers, they'll hit a lot of golf balls. That's how you get better. EEG text, if you're learning to measure, just keep measuring over and over again. Even if it seems tedious, even if it seems boring at some point, you have to make it into a little bit of a game. I wrote down to myself, if you can make everyday mundane tasks into a competitive game where you're trying to beat your time every single time, it can actually bring a little bit of fun to it. And once you get really good and really fast at doing it, you'll be able to bring that into the hospital, be more confident around the patients, know that you won't be taking a super long time so the patients aren't too mad at you. But everyone's a beginner at one point. One, I remember one guy said that it was a, I think he said it was like a subtle form of torture. Like he was talking to his family members on the phone. He's like, yeah, man, this EEG thing was like a subtle form of torture. And I was standing right behind him. Like some people just don't care. You see a lot of people in the hospital, guys, let me tell you. But to avoid uh, people's snarky comments, get really good at your speed, practice the fundamentals over and over again. Now, if you don't know exactly how to measure, I have another video on how to do that. I'll put it in the description of YouTube so you guys can check that out if you're really a beginner beginner. But these are a couple tips I use to increase my speed of measuring and it has paid dividends, guys. I really don't have people asking me, hey, hurry it up. Are we almost done yet? I, I don't really get that anymore, guys. So if it worked for me, I think it'll work for you guys as well. Just takes a lot of practice and time yourself. You might start out, it might take you 30 minutes to start. Just write it down. Then you'll have something to compare it against. And then it might take you 25 minutes after a little bit of practice. And then it'll take you 20 minutes. Then try to get under 10 minutes. And once you memorize all the locations and measurements, you could probably get it down like me to under five minutes, really quick, snappy, and then it'll just be second nature, guys. And that's really what you want. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it helped you out, hit the like button. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys on the next EEG video.